Maybe I'm over it. No. It's not working. I thought if I could sit with my kind of sit backwards to the couch, then, then maybe that would work. What are you doing? Well, what do you mean? Well, of course. No, no, no. Max. Hmm? What are you doing? Well, I'm talking to my friend. Huh? My friend. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. All right, I'm just going to step in here now. Hey, what are you doing? Don't, don't go in there. What, 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 why? We don't know what's in there. Apart from the mole man. I, I really do. I recommend stepping away from the cupboard. Okay. I know we've not been able to sleep for 168 hours. Hey, hey, hey. How do you know it's 168? I've been counting. Fine. Okay. Okay. I completely take ownership of this. It was my idea to have a nap. And we weren't supposed to. What are we going to do now? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm out of idea. Oh, no. Oh. What? Ding. 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 You know how sometimes when you're watching a film? Yeah. Or whatever. You watch it a few times and, and then you spot something in the background that's always been there but it's, you just never noticed it. Like, um... Like the time machine in, in Gremlins. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, like yeah. the first time I didn't even notice it, yeah. Well, I, I, I have spotted something. Uh-huh. That's obviously been there for a while and could possibly work. Been where for a while? Very close by. In fact, right... I just wanted to give you a moment of... Anticipation. Second ah. shelf down. And then look, third shelf down. Oh! <laughs> I see. I thought you might. Well then. Well then, let's... Let's take a look, shall we? I think we should. <laughs> What's that one? I'm assuming that you want to keep hold of that one, judging by your attire. Mine? You My mean. precious. <laughs> this is going to be different. Yes, it is. Before we get onto this, I think um, we should keep everybody else in a little bit more suspense, unless they're very eagle-eyed. Are you? Hello, and welcome again to a new month of maybe movie... Musicals? Maybe musicals? Maybe musicals, I guess. We uh, seem to have hit on something that may or may not work. It's a bit of an experiment, like a lot of this. <laughs> but it looks like this month we will be enjoying ourselves profusely. Oh, yes. One might even say obscenely. <laughs> with Phantom of the Opera. And... The Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> <laughs> Just before we get on to that, I hope everyone is well. Hello. As I've said that already. Aloha. It's like my writing. I have a terrible problem with beginning. Mm. Yes. Which is a terrible thing to have, but it's fine once you get over it. I'm going to give myself another segue point. <laughs> <laughs> Just for this week... Uh, Slightly different shout out, a bit of a shout out for ourselves, really. If you've seen our channel and other bits and pieces, then you'll know as well as doing this. We are a small publishing company. There's an opportunity to support us through the app uh, Buy Me a Coffee. Oh, is, yes. Uh, there should be a thing somewhere there. there. <laughs> it's going to be now both pointing there. if you want to buy us a coffee uh, have a look on there as well we've added a little bit of a target to help us along we're looking to get the first book that we released as a company which is a collection of short horror fiction by myself which is currently is only in uh, ebook form but we're trying to get that back into print so there's a target on there to help us work towards uh, we've had a bit of a start already uh, from Chris Neal of Z Development, so thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you! And 
again, give us a, give it a look if you like what we do and want to help us keep doing it and just help us again as a as a as a small business to to grow. Then please, and thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Oh dear, here we are. I have beer. I oh, I have beer too. Oh, it must be summer. It must be. You'd think the sun was out and all sorts of things. Don't be silly. All right. Well, we've got a couple of musicals to take a look at here. I could see this working. I mean, we're talking about a couple of madmen working on a personal creation that's consumed their lives. At the base of it, that's both, essentially what they are. Uh, they're both fond of a song or two. Oh, yes, 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 they are. Now, I'm assuming, of course, straight off the bat, that we are talking about swapping the Phantom with Frankenverter. Absolutely. I was just thinking then, do we want to do any of their... Um, their creations? Their accomplices, I was going to say. Oh, accomplices. Both of them, to a degree, they've got elements of, of Frankenstein in them. As in Frankenstein. Yes, the man. absolutely. That's, that's what I meant. Two yes. mad geniuses being consumed by their own creation. But they always have an, an, an ego, don't they? Yes, master. Well, kind that's riffraff, riff, isn't it? It's supposed it would have to be riffraff. He's even got the hunchback. Because then it means we can give the Phantom um, Miranda Richardson's character. Uh, uh, Madame the... Giri. Yeah. Because she's the only one who seems to... She's the one who knows. She's the one on the inside. Yeah. Uh, uh... Or do you just want to stick to... Or just put them in their slap bang on their own? Um... Yeah. I have to admit, I hadn't crossed my mind to swap their accomplices over. I, I thought of them as being part of the setting. Fair enough. But I did wonder if we might want to swap their creations with them just to avoid some awkward sexual politics. Do you want to take... I oh, see, so you want to do The Phantom and Christine? The Phantom and Christine. And Rocky and... and... Frank and Furter being their respective creations... I have to admit, it's it, it's purely because of the awkward sexual dynamics that would come with it otherwise. But I'm not sure on that. I was just pondering it. I hadn't thought about it, I must admit. It makes sense. I only thought about it from the one side because I thought, well, if it's Frankenfurter, it's not going to matter. Frankenfurter is openly bisexual. Yes, it doesn't matter. No, you know what? No, no. I was thinking about the characters of the creations themselves. Rather than mm-hmm. than their masters, their their creators, or thinking of their characters and the the dynamics that that would create. But you're right. Fundamentally speaking, Frank and Fur doesn't care. But it does when we come to the Phantom. But then again, does it have to? No, it doesn't matter. The Phantom only cares about the music. Sexuality is irrelevant. Although there is a sexual quality to the Phantom's obsession, it's not. It's not the primary purpose of his creation. Unlike Frankenfurs. Yeah. It's all about the music and the the, the, the the sexual frustration extends from falling in love with his own creation. <laughs> Sorry, my, my head has suddenly gone straight to that it's the Phantom essentially trying to create... Um, what do they call him in South Park? Is it Gopher Boy? Gopher... Ah. The Doctor, he's got this little thing. They think it might be his kid, but it, it doesn't actually look like a person. But there's a whole backstory. It was on the album that they did. Oh, about, right. Um, yeah. How he basically acquired <laughs> some of Michael Jackson's sperm and something else as well, combined them in an effort to create the perfect castrato. <laughs> so this kind of weird-looking mutant thing has the purest castrato voice you'll ever yeah. find. So, I mean, again, just throwing it up as a possible way that we could work it if if we decide to go that way. Because I mean, it still works, because Frankenfurter is still a performative character. Mm-hmm. It's just that the relationship of performative to sexual is reversed with the two characters. It's, you know, performative primarily for the Phantom with a secondary sexual component, whereas for Frank and Frank, it's, it's the all about sexual, sex. but with that performative quality coming into it. Okay. So, do we swap them, or do we leave them? I'm undecided, because I like both. I think both sound like brilliant ideas. Because it does allow us to have the moment where instead of, Christine, Christine, it would be, oh, Christine. Oh, that yes. does tickle me somewhat. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, let's do that way. Let's go that way. Okay, so we're going to leave the creations in their respective yes. movies. All right, brilliant. Okay, fine, all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that this doesn't get weirdly awkward at some point because <laughs> no. of the subject material. 
So it's going to happen regardless of which way around we put things. And it's appealingly appropriate though because we're doing Rocky Horror, so we, it, it's it's on topic. It is on topic. Yes, it's entirely on topic. Awesome. What did we, what did we decide to do, folks? <laughs> I think the next question that I had is is the score itself are the songs themselves are we saying are we I mean neither of us are composers no are um, you saying should we keep the music within its milieu I suppose the songs are uh, are systemic to to each individual piece so the, the songs themselves but are we going to say are we going to approach these songs borrowing elements from our new protagonists <laughs> On one hand, I can understand what you're saying, and there's a certain appeal to it. Although I think, personally, and this is my bias, that it would drag down the tempo of the various plots, or at least alter them in a very strange way. But also, I think you could still stick with the rock and roll and still have it be operatic. Well, parts of the overture for Phantom were very much in that kind of style. It made me kind of go, when I watched it, I was like, oh, oh, wow. So there is an element of this already included in, there, in, yeah. in, in, the, in the piece. I don't know if that's going to detract from the overall feel uh, feel of the film. That's my concern. It, it's tempting to swap them, but if we do, we'd be changing the nature of the musical itself. We get the opportunity to see Frankenfurter being lascivious in an operatic sense, and the Phantom being <laughs> elevated to the station of rock opera, or shunted to the station of rock opera. Sold. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. No, yeah. no you do. You do. You, you raise <laughs> perfectly relevant points. I was just presenting my bias there. It's not. It's not so much about taking the, um, the the tropes from the films. It's again how we how we bring out these characters in a slightly different set in a slightly different um, genre. Yes. Yeah. That's what I. That's what appeals to me certainly. Let's agree now. Although we can talk about like changes in the way the songs be, might be performed or something like that. That we're not going to attempt to rewrite the songs of the musical. We'd be here all year. I'm just not that talented. <laughs> no, no, same. I'm just going to be honest, folks. I'm not. Obviously, if you have any ideas, if this, if this if you gives you any ideas of how things might look, then please feel free to give them a crack if you want. Send them uh, yeah, to us. We'd love to hear what you thought of it. Yeah, and, and if you've got, yeah, I, that would be great. We can talk about that later, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so even if you, you know, if you end up filming anything, send it to us, and we can obviously try and include them in the um, episode somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm sure we can find a place to put it. Let's have a look at acts, shall we? Just because it's the first one that's on my list here in my my notebook. Um, so the Phantom. Mm-hmm. I find uh, the first act is pretty well defined. I'm pretty sure it ends when Christine unmasks the Phantom. See, it's interesting because the the, the the music itself, um, as far as I know, is it's, it's broken into a, into a prelude, uh, and then sorry, prelude, uh, a, a prologue, and two acts. That makes sense that because sense. that's. Sort of like the prologue, because the next scene is uh, what I simply call the opera ghost song, because I, unfortunately I'm not very familiar with the names of the songs from The Phantom. I will look this up. Do you, do you then say the third act is after... That'd be too late. After the um, graveyard? You see, I struggle with this. There were actually one, two, three places that are marked as possible beginnings of a third act. I feel like... The third act begins at the end of All I Ask of You. Because that's the bit on the rooftop when the Phantom feels betrayed and swears vengeance. Well, it's curious because that's the reason why I said the end of of, of the graveyard scene when he beats him in the fight. Because again, it's the, I'm going back, I'm now going to take my revenge, but you're right. The graveyard scene was my third one that was marked. Nice. Or the other one was immediately after Jiri's tale when she tells the tale of the, the, the Phantom like that one though as a possible because it's essentially it's a second unmasking isn't it mm-hmm. they're all good turning points but the, I suppose the point is we've got to pick one honestly I like the, uh, the the parallel there between the two forms of the unmasking so the actual actual unmasking so unmasking and then unmasked again yeah so can I borrow that so oh, I can make a special note yeah. so I don't forget Next time. So that is definitely the beginning of Act 3. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Rocky Horror. Right. Now, this is one um, I thought it was incredibly clear, although watching it back made me wonder. Uh-huh. I, in my initial notes, marked the beginning of Act 2 as basically um, the whole uh, I can make you a man hot patootie mm-hmm. sequence, because it, it ends with a reprise of I can make you a man. Yes. 
partly because that's like a fundamental change in everything. And also it's one of the points where the narrator intrudes. Although I did wonder, because I'm, I was paying attention to the musical aspects, do we divide the acts according to structure or do we divide them by songs? Because if we divide them by songs, then it's actually when Rocky is born is the end of Act 1. Because there are approximately five... That would make five songs per act. I like the thematic value of that. We're doing maybe musicals. Mm-hmm. We should divide def- define our acts by songs. So, yeah. In that case, it's Rocky's birth, uh, which then gives us the montage of the Sword of Damocles, I Can Make You a Man, yeah. Hot Patootie. Because uh, then there's a long bit, and then there's only two other songs, which are... Touch Me, Touch Me, and of course, Eddie's Teddy. He's, Before we get to the floor show, yeah. Which, again, that at the end of Eddie's Teddy is where I'm... Or that immediate bit immediately afterwards is where I mark the end of Act 2. I'm I'm happy with that. That works for me. I always, I always think about that as well with the narrator. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, I get wonderfully, wonderfully, as always, played by Charles Gray. Uh, but it does make me think... It does mean every so often now, I can't quite look at him the same way when I'm watching The Devil Rides Out. As Mr. McCarter. Oh, right. Okay. I, it always, See, I thought you were going to make a Blowfield reference. <laughs> there is that one as well, but no, no, no. Always, always. Yeah, okay. Devil Rides Out. Yeah. No, no, you're perfectly good point. It's been a while since I've watched that movie. It's been a good 15 years. <clears throat> so it seems like we've reached an agreement here. We do. Uh, I think the, only, the last thing we need to decide then is which one we're going to do first. Gosh, I don't know. I don't think I've got a preference because they're going to be interesting in their own ways. Build things up to a finale, as we like to do. Mm. So, as it seems appropriate with this. So, the question is, do you think you will have more fun and you want to save the fun until the end by trying to see how Frankenfurter fits into late 19th century Paris? Or do you want, do you think you'll have more fun with seeing how the Phantom fits in in early 70s um, rock opera? Oh, I see, I've had five, seven, seven several thoughts alright I think because the structure is cleaner on the Rocky Horror Mm -hmm. I think we should do that first ease ourselves in yeah it's got it's got a more clearly defined structure the Phantom has got this really deep theme of repeating motifs and themes musically and verbally over and over again and it makes the structure a little more choppy whereas Rocky is Bang, bang, bang. It's very clearly delineated. I agree. Okay, I'm good with that. So, So, come back and join us then, please, on Wednesday for Act 1 of O. I'm going to say I think it should be the Rocky Horror Phantom Show. Yes, I would have gone with Phantom of the Horror Show. Oh, you see, no, 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 because I was was going to go with Pervert of the Opera. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> okay so um, you have to say that because uh, that's a lot of words oh okay so uh, yes join us next Wednesday for the first act of the Rocky Horror Phantom Show and continue us to follow us throughout the month to eventually find out what will happen during the events of the pervert of the opera <laughs> And on that happy thought, uh, have a great weekend and we will see you on Wednesday. As always, folks, take care and TTFN. Okay.